Holy Father, we're thankful that we can be together. We're thankful for such a lovely place where we feel relatively safe. We thank you for that, Father. We pray that uh, we'll not totally let down our guard ever for the safety of the flock around us. And even tonight, as we study this subject tonight, that uh, maybe it'll even keep our eyes open always uh, for our children, for our families, for one another, always want to maintain safety. And, and this thing that's happened in France, Father, has just made us so aware that probably churches are among the most vulnerable. So we pray that you'd keep all churches safe across America, across France, across England, uh, Germany, all of Europe, and anywhere else, Father, that churches might be at danger, even in Iraq. And so, Father, we pray that cooler heads will end up being in charge and that even the ones who want to hurt us will choose not to do such things as this. And now, Father, we pray that you would bless the families of all those that have been affected directly and indirectly. And so, Father, we pray that you'd bless us in our study tonight, that you'd help us to make changes and to become the people you want us to be and that it was always your plan for us to be. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Many things we know and think are literally limitless uh, exist. Uh, uh, we live in a limitless universe. Uh, as best we can tell, the universe is not just ginormous. It is expanding. And it is expanding at such a rate that the outer edge, and when we say expanding, it's like the universe is still being created. And so it, uh, it's like this is still like day one. So at the outer edge of the creation over here and the outer edge of the creation over there, as it's being created, forming, and moving out, those edges are moving apart from each other faster than the speed of light. Now, nothing moves faster than the speed of light, you understand. But that's so far away now, and it's moving so fast, and that's so far away, moving so fast, that separating from each other, it's separating and growing faster than the speed of light now. So that's an unlimited universe, if you will, and becoming more and more so each second that passes. We live uh, and serve a limitless God. I mean, He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. Uh, there's nothing He cannot do, and there's no place He doesn't exist. So He's everywhere. And we think, so we don't only live in an uh, unlimited situation and we serve an unlimited being, but we think with limitless minds. Our minds are limitless. I mean, concepts, now granted, we have to learn them. There are limits at that moment until we learn the concept, like this new math. Right? Right? Has anybody seen this stuff? Yeah, I can't say too much about it. I got members of the family invested in that. But, but uh, it's, it's, until you learn it, it seems out there, right? And, and that's the way it is about a lot of things. For example, until there was a movie called Matrix, no one would have ever thought of such a concept, is what I'm saying. So now, theoretical physics, physicists like James Gates uh, believes he's found computer code in the string theory equations supporting the idea that we may actually, in fact, live in a matrix, which is kind of weird. But uh, David Pierce, a British philosopher uh, who uh, basically his work is in uh, uh, trying to abolish all suffering for all sentient life, no matter what sentient life we're talking about, try to stop any suffering. He said this, the uh, simulation argument of the universe, the simulation argument is perhaps the first interesting argument for the existence of a creator in the last 2,000 years, which is kind of an interesting thing. Huh? So I thought that was interesting. You might not think that. But, but what if we were truly limitless? What if we really were truly limitless and we could just keep getting smarter? Well, here's some interesting stuff here. I, I don't know if you've seen 
the movie Lim Limitless. I'm not necessarily recommending it, but if you have it, you won't understand the concept. In 2011, the film uh, directed by Neil Berger, uh, it's based upon a book by Alan uh, Glenn called The Dark Fields. And let me just read to you the summary of it. It says, Eddie Mora, which is Bradley Cooper that you see in the picture there, a struggling author, suffering from writer's block, living in New York, is stressed by an approaching deadline. His girlfriend, Lindy, that's Abby Cornish, uh, frustrated with his lack of progress and financial dependence, breaks up with him. Later, Eddie happens to run into Vernon. That's not our Vernon, different guy. Uh, Johnny Whitworth is the guy. The estranged brother of Eddie's ex-wife, Melissa Ann Friel, and Vernon, involved with a pharmaceutical company, gives Eddie a sample of a new smart drug called NZT48. After taking the pill, Eddie finds himself able to learn and analyze at a superhuman rate and recall memories from his distant past with the only apparent side effect being a change in the color of Eddie's irises while on the drug, his eyes become an intense shade of electric blue. Uh, that's not the whole story. I won't tell you any more about the side effects, but we'll just leave it there. So basically, it supposedly made him limitless. He could access everything. Of course, nothing like that exists. Or maybe they're starting to think it does. There's a thing called uh, TDCS now, a small t, DCS. Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation. I'm not recommending it. Please, children, don't go out and try it. But it is interesting, and I would be very tempted to try it. But the <laughs> it's a 9-volt battery. You connect the 9-volt battery to uh, two uh, basic diodes, uh, not diodes, but electrodes, and you connect the positive side over here and the negative side over here, while you're concentrating heavily on something. And believe it or not, they're actually, this is at TED, DARPA's been experimenting with it for over 20 something years. Our special teams in the military may already been having this done to them for as much as 10 to 20 years. Uh, when you put this on somebody and they're in a simulation or something like that, it apparently stimulates the central core and makes them focus at the same kind of level you focus when you are in a car wreck. In a car wreck, everything slows down. Well, to them, it looks like, like if they're playing a video game, it looks like everything slows down and everything becomes very easy to do. And apparently this works on everything you're interested in and that you focus on. You can't do this and it make you interested in history. That doesn't work. And you can't pass your history test if you're not interested in history. You can't pass your math test. It only makes you, and apparently there's residual effects and for a time afterwards you're good or better at it than you were before and people are actually doing this and learning. Now, we'll caution you, some people have burned their brains out because they've gone up too many volts, by the way. And the right, it's actually being done, but apparently nine volts is the magic number and people are doing it. Not a little bit. You go on your internet and you'll find for Christmas, a lot of people are buying these devices at about $175 a pop and it is spreading like wildfire. So if you think I'm starting this, I'm not starting it. I'm making you aware of something that's already out there spreading like wildfire. I don't know the outcome of this 20 years from now, but it's already there. There's another thing that's out there that's, I can't pronounce that. Can you pronounce that? Have I got a pharmacist in the room? Yeah, yeah that sounds right. Anyway, it's for treating dementia, uh, and it's apparently having great success, they tell me, and Alzheimer's. Uh, patients actually making people smarter, believe it or not. They're saying it is. They're saying it really kind of works. And they don't recommend it, giving it to normal people. But we live in America. So do you think normal people are trying it? Yes, they are. And apparently they're saying it's actually having a positive impact. The only people they're kind of recommended it for is people with Alzheimer or some form of dementia, according to the 
Japanese guy that I can't pronounce his name that works as a Harvard professor of cellular biology and the Boston Children's Hospital team. Uh, they, they work with uh, young patients particularly, but they're saying that the, the return growth rate is at the level of a kid. So that's the reason they're really excited about it. So they're, it won't make you limitless, neither of those things, but it makes people think of that movie. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not advocating. So the idea is that we can change and maybe become more than we thought was possible. Uh, but the problem is, is that in connection with that, you can go either direction. You don't always improve. We, we're all capable of change, but all change is not necessarily good. And that's the thing we need to realize. Uh, we Christians have known that we could change and become more for a very long time. We know the passage that was read a moment ago, verses 8 through 11. Now you yourselves uh, do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Now, church leaders, because of what we are exposed to all the time, and I'm talking particularly elders, but church leaders who know their flocks know all this very well, that people have made a lot of changes to become Christians. For example, here at Bell Shoals Church of Christ, a list of of criminal and civil arrests and convictions of members and members' family and visitors since 1996 would have to include among them these kind of things. Lewd and lascivious acts upon a child, burglary, fraudulent use of a credit card, petty theft, battery on a law enforcement officer, child abuse, battery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, fraud, retail theft over $300, possession of drugs, driving while intoxicated, worthless checks, manslaughter, solicitation for prostitution, murder second degree, contempt of court, false impersonating an officer, obstruction or opposing an officer without violence, scheme to defraud a financial institution. But for the record, these or those are pretty typical issues found among all churches and church members in our world today, as well as in biblical times, as you just saw that list from 1 Corinthians. This suggests that all men have an incredible ability to change. There's been a lot of things done by us all, and they have virtually a limitless capacity to change and become better people. And the case in point is, you're at church on a Sunday night. Once upon a time, you might not have ever considered that. You have the capability of changing. Changes may be limitless, but sometimes they actually come very slowly. For example, the potato is a good example. The potato has come around very slowly. When it was first introduced into Europe, and particularly into England, by Sir Walter Raleigh, the newspapers printed editorials making fun of it and saying that it could get you sick, you should not eat it. And preachers got up and preached sermons against eating the potato, and, and even to the point that some thought it would, if you plant it, like farmers said, if you plant it, it will sterilize the soil and you'll never be able to grow anything there again. And it was said that it might cause some very strange illnesses if it doesn't kill you dead by eating it. Have any of y'all eaten a potato? Uh, the tomato, uh, you know, potato, tomato. Uh, in the late 1700s, the Europeans feared the tomato and they call it the poison apple. You recall it, they used to throw tomatoes at bad actors because they thought it would kill them if it hit them in the mouth. 
you say, well, well, where did they get that idea? Well, they got that idea because people did die from tomatoes. Tomatoes did kill people. And the reason that tomatoes kill people is because the very rich in Europe ate off of pewter plates. The, the, the most wealthy had pewter plates. And pewter plates, if you know it, are high in lead. And if you eat raw tomatoes on lead plates, that tomato acid will eat away at the tableware and will give you lead poisoning and you can die from lead poisoning. You at least get sick. And so they got sick from it and then quit eating tomatoes. But they thought it was tom tomatoes. And it was, but it was really the fact they shouldn't have been eating off of pewter plates. Amen? And if you got pewter plates at home, give it up, okay? It's time to let it go. It's, um, but anyway, any rate, so let's review three candid truths about our possibilities. So changing may be limitless, but sometimes... We're just really slow in changing and making changes. Potato, tomato shows that clearly. Let me give you three candid truths now of changes and truths about this text that I think you need to pay attention to. In the church, it is possible to find limitless cheating. And you need to know that. Please know that. I know people go to church, they're shocked that anybody would ever cheat them at church. But I'm reading right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. Know you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. So cheaters do others wrong. And cheaters do wrong brethren. Okay? Both baptized, same water, and still will cheat each other. Yes, that happened in this text. Uh, and cheaters do become deceived themselves. So beware that there are always going to be, I mean there were here, so there's always going to be cheater Christians. Okay? That, just don't be naive. So it, don't leave your purse laying around the church building. Hello? Especially if you don't have any money in it, it's not a problem. Just leave it laying out there. It's okay. But if you, if you, if you want to keep your money, I don't recommend you leave it. There's been more than one time money's been stolen out of purses at this building. And a world famous time for that is at weddings. Uh, and yeah, it happens a lot, and it's happened in this building quite a few times. There have been quite a few thefts in this building during services that I'm aware of. So I know you want to believe that everybody here is good, but listen, Matthew 7, verse 15 says, In sheep's clothing they come, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. That means they want to prey on you. There's always going to be people among us that would prey on us. And 2 Peter 2 and verse 3 says, By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. So for the sake of making money off of you, they'll lie to you. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. I know you expect all of us here to be absolutely honest. Well, I am, but don't trust anybody else. But, you know, I mean, how, how would you know? Uh, crooked church folks exist. That's what the first part of this text is about. It's about suing each other. Have you ever noticed that that's the first part of this? Verses 1 through 7 is about suing each other. And, and what's kind of funny is that it's always argued, well, we can't sue each other. Okay. Okay, that's not really true. I understand the, why you would conclude that. It does sound that way. And the truth is, if it's a small matter, you should let it go and not sue. And if it's a big matter, you should go to the elders with it. Amen. Amen. But what about the guy who won't listen to the elders, Matthew 18, 17. It says, if he refuses to even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. So if a man won't listen to godly people and he's cheated you, sue his pants off, even if he sits next to you in church. Because he is now a heathen and he won't listen to anything right. 
So be careful, just be careful. A candid truth is, is in the church, it's possible to find limitless cheating. Don't think you're in a safe zone here. Second one, verses 9 through 11. In the church, it is possible to find limitless corruption. I know you want to think that everybody here is just sweet and never done anything wrong. That's not the situation you're in. Some are still doing it, but most have quit. <laughs> but look at this list. This is not a schoolgirl's list, folks. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Fornicators, neither fornicators. That's sleeping around before you got married. I know none of y'all touched your girlfriend before you got married. Didn't happen. Y'all hear those giggles, right? Nor idolaters. That's just elevating one thing above God. Nor, and I'm sure that never happened. Nor adulterers. Well, everybody here has been absolutely faithful all their life to their mate. Guaranteed, right? Nor homosexuals. Well, that doesn't happen in the church. Nor sodomites. That's usually male prostitutes for uh, men. Nor thieves nor covetous, nor drunkards. Well, that's definitely not there. Nor revilers, that's people who speak inappropriately to others. Nor extortioners, that uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, such. That suggests the list is limited. This is not the full scope of all that you will find at church. So if you're shocked with this list, let me suggest to you, this is just the beginning. There are more things that people have done or they used to do before they came here. Were suggests that the list is previous. So we don't say, well, if you're doing it now, it's okay. We don't say that. You, that all of these things are supposed to be in your past. Amen? We don't do these things anymore. Were, some... Some that suggest that the list is extreme. That means everybody sitting here didn't do those things on that list. There are some goody two shoes in here hadn't sinned in about three years. Or maybe they never have. But the rest of us sinned, right? Okay. So some suggest the list is a little extreme and not everybody's done those things. But beware that there are corrupt folks who go to church. You shouldn't think, well, I'm in church, I'm safe. It's not really the case. You should never assume that your children or your grandchildren are safe because we're at church. You just shouldn't assume that. You shouldn't assume that anybody is 100% Safe at church. That, that no one would ever go up to your wife and flirt with her. Well, we're at church. That would never happen. Folks, I have seen it so many times, you don't even want to know. I've seen it. I've known it's happened. I've seen affairs going on at church. Okay? It happens. Okay? Just be aware. And if your mate keeps telling you uh, you're just being silly, you really need to talk to them. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, lest Satan take advantage because we're not ignorant of his devices. He will take advantage of any of us. We can all fall, right? You're not above it. You say, well, I would never do that. You've never been tested maybe, but don't say you'd never do it. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 6 says that no one should take advantage of you and defraud his brother because the Lord is the avenger of all such. It's not a good idea to, to defraud one another because the Lord's going to come after you. But looking spiritual is a method of covering up vice. That's 1 Peter 2 and verse 16. Using liberty as a cloak for vice. Who's in the best position for that? I am. Don't ever listen to me about any business deal. Amen? Amen. My wife even takes that advice. Okay. Flattery is a method used to take advantage of the innocent. Jude 1 and verse 16 says, they're flattering people to take advantage. Now, here's the deal. That's said by a preacher to church folks. We think this is talking about everybody out there. It's talking about everybody in here. 
Just need to be aware. So, a candid truth is the church, in the church, it is possible to find limitless corruption, limitless cheating. But, in the church, it's possible to find limitless change. We can change. We may have been like that, but we don't have to stay like that. Amen? We can be better than that. Verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were washed, but you were sanctified. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The name and the Spirit of God justified us. Amen. So beware, however, when I say that, I need to caution you again. Beware that there are changed folks who go to church who think they changed themselves. There ain't none of us here did that. Now we helped, we worked with him, but we did not change us because you were washed by the Lord in his own blood. Revelation 1 verse 5, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Folks, we did not wash away our sins now, I know it said to Paul, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. Well, he did arise and he was baptized, but it was the blood of Jesus that literally washed his sins away, not Paul who did that. You can't do it. And you're just sanctified by the Spirit. Romans 15 verse 16 says, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working in our life is continually sanctifying us. Yes, there's initial sanctification when He comes to live within us. We have been declared clean and therefore we are the temple of the Holy God and the Holy God lives within us. Okay, so we're sanctified. But there is a sanctification process too by the Holy Spirit as we allow the Spirit to lead us and we become better and better and better people. But that's the work of the Spirit. And then we're justified by God. Romans chapter 3 verses 24 through 28 says this, being justified freely by His grace, not by something I do, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as a propitiation for, well, by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness that He might be the just and the justifier. So we were justified not by us, but by Him. He's the justifier. So beware lest you start thinking that these limitless changes are done all by you. Or all by me. We do do something, but it's not all by us. But since God's helping us, that's why the change is limitless. We can become something great for God. So a candid truth in the church is possible to have limitless changes. So even though we nearly have a, a limitless capacity to change, we don't always want to change. We don't want to. So now we have this capacity. Do we want to change? Uh, a doctor, after examining this man, said to his patient, said, uh, you're in terrible shape. Sounds like my doctor. You're in terrible shape. You've got to do something about it. First, you must stop working like a dog. You've got to tell your wife that you can no longer help around the house. You've got to tell her she has to cook more nutritious meals and inform her that you're going to make a budget and she has to stick to it and she must keep the kids off your back so that you can relax and take it easy. Unless there are some changes like that in your life, you'll probably be dead in about a month. Well, the man said, well, Doc, uh, this would sound more official coming from you. Could you please call my wife and, and give her those instructions? He said, okay, so fella, got in his car and went home. His wife met him at the door, rushed at, to him and says, I talked to your doctor, poor baby. He says, you only got about 30 days to live. <laughs> you know, sometimes we don't want to change. It's uh, kind of like in the church. We sometimes don't like change. How many people does it take to change a light bulb at church? It takes four. One to install it and three to reminisce about the old light bulb. It was a wonderful blub, you know. And we like verses like Proverbs 24, 21, do not associate with those given to change. Isaac Newton in his first law of motion said, everything continues in a state of rest unless it 
is compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. So even things don't like change. We don't like change for a lot of the reason. Uh, let me show you, though, it is possible. There are Arctic animals that change regularly. All of these up here change twice a year. The Arctic fox goes white in September and then changes back to those colors above by that summer. The Arctic hare does the same thing. The tarmigeon does the same thing. That's that bird. The caribou does the same thing. The ermine does the same thing. In God's nature, he has shown us that great change is possible. It's all around us. Great change is possible. Don't say, well, that's just the way I am. I'll never be any different. We can change. We have already, if you just knew the stories around you, you would already believe that limitless change was possible. But if you're here tonight and you have doubts about it, at least give it a shot. Amen? Repent, confess the name of Christ, and be baptized tonight. That's all we did, and God helped us along. Won't you come if you need to while we stand and as we sing? When we walk with the Lord in the